In this video, we're watching for the threat for some severe weather for at least the next three days across portions of the central and southern United States here. We have very favorable conditions throughout the whole week here, leading to the threat for widespread severe weather, not only for today, tomorrow, but as well day three. Really watching out for some concerning severe weather on day three of next week here. So keeping a very close eye on the next three days for some severe weather. But without further ado, let's get in the video. So here's a look now at the day one outlook here. Again, we are watching out for some severe weather today across not only uh, portions of Dixie Alley in the south central United States, but as well some severe weather widespread across portions of the central plain and portion of the Midwest, or specifically as well portions of Kansas and Colorado. Once again, another slight risk scattered in the outlier here outside the main event. And again, actually last time we saw this was last week and we actually did see five tornadoes in eastern Colorado with the same slight risk. However, it does not look like today is going to be a 20 threat for you guys up there. But we do have two uh, widespread slight risk for today. Of course, the main one we're watching out is going to be for portions of Dixie, including Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, and Alabama. This is including a widespread area of around 8.2 million people which are under this whole slight risk, including the one in Kansas and Colorado. So this includes New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Mobile, Jackson, Mattery, of course, in portions of the uh, South Central. And then we we actually have three areas of, of marginal risk. One, of course, there across the South Central and Southeastern United States. A second there for portions of the Western and Central Plains. And a third up there scattered across portions of the Midwest. And this includes overall around 11 million people, including Memphis, Denver, Aurora, Birmingham, and Montgomery. Let's go ahead and now look at the tornado probability because things have changed. The uh, a five percent chance has now been issued for a tornado probability for today's risk for Dixie Alley. So we do have a little bit bigger of a threat for some tornadoes, and it is a pretty widespread area of a five percent chance all the way from portions of western Alabama to portions of central Arkansas. So this five percent does include around six point three million people, including New Orleans. Baton Rouge, Mobile, Jackson, Mississippi, and Mattery, Louisiana. So we are going to be we are going to be watching out for some scattered tornadoes across specifically the afternoon hours across Mississippi, possibly into portions of northern Louisiana. That's exactly where I'll be watching, kind of right here for some tornadoes uh, later this afternoon and portions of the evening hours once conditions get a lot more favorable here. But as well, two two percent chance for us as well. One, of course, across much of Dixie Alley and portions of the Mississippi River Basin, and another two percent chance way out there across portions of the Rockies and outside the Rockies. So, in general, this two percent chance has included around seven and a half million people, uh, which includes big cities like Memphis, Birmingham, Montgomery, Shreveport, and Little Rock. Wind threat, of course. It's going to be pretty widespread across the United States today. Of course, we do have those two areas of five or two areas of fifteen percent chance for uh, some uh, pretty gusty winds, and of course, that does include portions of Colorado, Kansas, and Nebraska, which is where we do which, which is the reasoning why we have a slight risk there. So this fifteen percent chance includes around eight point three million people, which uh, is overall for both fifteen percent chance. And it includes New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Mobile, Jackson, Mattery. So we're really watching out within that yellow areas for some pretty gusty winds within these uh, within these storms uh, throughout the day. And then a five percent chance we'll be seeing a little bit less probability for some pretty severe and gusty winds. And that includes around eight, uh, around eight, uh, eleven million people. Sorry, eleven million people, including Memphis, Denver, Aurora, Birmingham, and Montgomery. And of course, the hail probability is going to be a little bit more limited across towards western Dixie Alley as a result of those higher laps rates staying a little bit kind of, I guess, on the western side of the Mississippi River Valley and the Mississippi River uh, in general. But this 15% uh, chance is included around uh, 4 uh, point six million people. So if you round it up, basically five million people are under this fifteen percent chance for uh hair probability here. This includes New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Mattery, Lafayette, and Gulfport, Mississippi. So a little bit more different names here. And that's exactly why this uh slight risk is so much more widespread than what it was yesterday. It did not go into Alabama really, and it did not really go much into Arkansas. So it has extended quite a bit here. And that's what we have for day one. Let's go ahead and now check a look here at day two. Let me actually zoom in a little bit here for you guys on day two. And here's a look. It's very, very large. Uh, slight risk. It has not changed that much here, really, in general. It has shifted a little bit more to the north here. But other than that, it's stayed. It's 
pretty much the, basically very similar to what it was yesterday. So nothing too crazy here. The slight risk level two out of five will most likely stay. Uh, I think there's a better chance day two can get an enhanced risk and day one getting an enhanced risk. Um, but again, I'm not saying there's going to be an enhanced risk for tomorrow. I mean, there is definitely a probability possibly really watching out for maybe the the, the hail threat could possibly get the 30% chance, but we got to keep a very close eye on it. I mean, there's a very large light risk, so yeah, there's definitely raising, rising concerns for maybe an enhanced risk here as well. Uh, we'll get into that later on for day three, but so light risk includes around 21 million people, uh, including big cities like Indianapolis, Memphis, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, and St. Louis. So Indianapolis, uh, one of your first light risks so far of the year. Uh, so it's it definitely a, a May-like pattern here. Typically, uh, this is something you would see in May, not really April, where the severe weather is going to get far out of Dixie Alley and sitting way more to the north and to the west here. And that's exactly what we're going to be seeing for day two. As marginal risk does include around 21 million people as well. So overall, we're seeing 40 plus million people to at least get some type of severe weather. Uh, this includes Dallas, Columbus, Ohio, Fort Worth, Nashville, and Arlington. So we're talking all the way from DMW to the heart of Ohio. We're watching for some severe weather, at least in the marginal risk. So overall, pretty widespread here. Uh, tornado probability is at a 5% chance here for specifically, specifically for more of those areas kind of towards the Ozarks and closer to Tornado Alley. And that does make sense. We'll be seeing a lot warmer temperatures and a lot just overall better conditions uh, in general to with seeing at least a tornado probability. But we do have a more, more widespread 2% chance, which actually goes as far east as Indiana, Kentucky as well getting to portions there of southern Illinois. But this 5% chance doesn't include around 4 million people. Uh, including southern Missouri, uh, southern uh, Illinois, portions of northwestern Arkansas, southeastern Kansas, and northwestern Oklahoma. So kind of right on the edge there of Tornado Alley of Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, and Arkansas. Uh, of course, it, it does include cities like Tulsa, Springfield, Missouri, Broken Area, Oklahoma, Fayetteville, Arkansas, and Springville, Arkansas. And then, of course, the 2% chance is a little bit more widespread, including around 5 million people, which includes big cities like uh, St. Louis, Evansville, Fort Smith, Arkansas, St. Charles, Missouri, and uh, Owensboro, Kentucky. Went through, of course, very widespread, a actually pretty large hatch risk within this big 15% chance. And that significant severe risk, which is also hatch risk, includes 7 million people here. So very widespread threat for some pretty significant winds. That's exactly why there is going to definitely be a chance here within the hail or the winds for at least a 30% chance of so getting consider an enhanced risk. It's definitely not going to be guaranteed, but there's definitely the question whether an enhanced risk could possibly be issued as a result of this large area of significant severe threat for winds, including Tulsa, St. Louis, Springfield, Evansville, and Broken Area, and a Broken Arrow. And of course, we have a very large, large and watch for a 15 and 5% chance outside of that significant severe risk. Same thing for the hail. We're seeing around 6.3 million people, and that's going to be a little bit more towards the west here, a little bit closer to, to Tornado Alley, including northeastern Oklahoma, northwestern Arkansas, southwestern Missouri, and southeastern Kansas is exactly where we're watching out for possibly the more significant severe weather for tomorrow in general. But of course, this significant risk does actually extend all the way up to St. Louis and portions there near, um, I believe, Springfield, Illinois. So it's really going far uh, towards the east here and of course i'm really really concerned here uh not concerned but i'm definitely keeping a very very close eye on day three here we have a very widespread slide risk, and i definitely do think an enhanced risk will be issued for portions of the southeast here really watching out for this whole area for maybe an enhanced risk to be issued here i mean day three is definitely looking at uh probably the best day out of the, the three days we're gonna be seeing really good cave values it doesn't, it doesn't look like we're missing that much cab whatsoever. Of course, it's a little bit too far to actually get great great into death. But overall, day three is looking pretty good here. But slight risk already including 19 and a half million people, including Atlanta, Georgia, Birmingham, Baton Rouge, Montgomery, and Nashville. And then a marginal including 41 million people from the Gulf Coast to the Great Lakes here. So overall, severe weather is becoming very widespread as we get into May. So here's now a look at the NAM, or no, this is actually a look at the ACRR for the next 48 hours as we're looking at the 12Z here. So looking at for some severe weather, of course, across portions of Dixie Alley in the South Central for the next few hours here. Uh, we're going to be seeing some pretty gusty winds and possibly some scattered hail across 
mainly Louisiana, Arkansas, and uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Mississippi, but as well some scatter storms, at least for the next hour or so in Texas, but those will start to kind of die off within the next few hours here. As we go later on, though, and into the early afternoon hours, these storms are going to be mainly elevated, not going to be see a big, significant tornado threat. But as we go a little bit more towards the evening hours, uh, we're going to be possibly seeing some embedded supercells across specifically Alabama, Mississippi, northern Louisiana, and southeastern Arkansas. Can really watch out for us and maybe some scattered tornadoes in those areas. Again, you can kind of see some embedded supercells across Mississippi uh, within the evening hours and overnight here as well. Some pretty intense storms, of course, across northeastern Colorado and portions of uh, the western plains. You're going to be seeing some pretty intense line of storms here across the central United States here. But it looks like the more severe storms will kind of stick, uh, stick towards the west here in northwestern Kansas, southwestern Nebraska. Some pretty intense wind and possibly some hail. Very, low, very, very small tornado threat here. I don't really see any tornadoes happening uh, today, like we saw last week with five tornadoes in Colorado, but overall some pretty widespread severe weather across uh, Iowa. There some pretty good storms, uh, and it's going to kind of be overnight here, and then it will kind of fall apart as we go into tomorrow early morning here. But as well, tomorrow early morning, seeing some scatter storms there across uh, Dixie Alley, as well some scatter storms in general across the United States are pretty widespread. But let's now go, and even tomorrow late morning to noon, noon some pretty severe storms across georgia and alabama so we may see some scattered severe storms across those areas maybe some gusting wind and small hail uh, near southwestern georgia and south central alabama really watching out possibly for some hail and it's going to be by tomorrow early afternoon so keeping a very close eye on some storms across those areas but let's not go towards tomorrow uh overnight into uh now Tuesday morning here watching out for that severe weather of course across those areas such as Oklahoma there southeastern Missouri and just south central Missouri and even southwestern Missouri of course pretty widespread severe weather across southern Missouri in general and you kind of see some pretty strong line of storms in your OKC as well as some pretty strong storms kind of going south of St. Louis some pretty good storms there in southern Illinois and southeastern uh, Missouri that's going to continue to make its way towards the uh, Tuesday morning hours. And that's going to be some pretty big threats there for a portion of western Kentucky, southern Indiana, and portions of the Ohio River Valley. So some pretty intense storms there in that in that vicinity for overnight tomorrow and to early Tuesday morning here. Let's as well look at a threat for day three. So this is going to be looking at, at the NAN 3 kilometer since the NAN does go 60 hours out. And here's now a look at Tuesday 11 in the morning here. So just after the severe weather kind of dies off a little bit in Ohio Valley. And the Mississippi River Valley, we're gonna be seeing that severe weather kind of rising for Dixie I. So uh, Tuesday late morning, some scattered storms, nothing too crazy. Uh, I mean, it's gonna get a lot more favorable conditions for some storms. And by already three o'clock, it's a pretty widespread storm across just Georgia, North Carolina, Alabama, and Alabama. And to the west, we're going to be seeing possibly a small squall and developing across Arkansas, Louisiana, and Tennessee there. That's going to be the main system to really watch out for. You can kind of see a big line of storms here by the evening hour, 7 o'clock Tuesday. Some pretty intense storms, possibly some embedded supercells, uh, which could very well be within this squall line across Mississippi, Alabama, even make its way towards Georgia. So really watching out for some pretty intense severe weather. Look at 8 o'clock here. 8 o'clock. Uh, by Tuesday, a really intense squall, and there's definitely going to be a threat possibly for some supercells kind of maybe on the southern side there in the Mississippi, or possibly some best supercells kind of ahead of that main squall line. So really watching out for some significant saber weather uh, Tuesday night into possibly early Wednesday morning here across the southeast and portions of Dixie Alley. But let's now go ahead and look at an overview of the next three days. Uh, from now on, we'll be looking at the NAM since the HBR does not go that far out, only 48 hours out on the 12Z. Let's go ahead and look at the next few hours here. I'm seeing some decent or some very, very low Cape values, at least right now. But it's going to quickly change as we go within the next few hours here. In the early afternoon hours, we're going to get a lot better Cape values across portions of Dixie Alley and the Gulf Coast of the 2,600 joules per kilogram as well. In the southeastern portion there of Louisiana, getting as high as 3,000 joules per, per kilogram. So getting some really nice Cape as we go later to the uh, early afternoon hours. And as we now go into the evening hours, this is going to really, really, really rise a threat for us. Some tornado probability across portions of Dixie Alley in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Arkansas. We're going to be seeing anywhere from uh, 1,800 K to possibly 2,000 joules 
per kilogram here, but we're gonna get our best conditions around six o'clock, seven o'clock, or five, six o'clock here, and get as high as maybe three thousand joules per, per kilogram there in Louisiana. But pretty overall, some decent K values for some super weather to today across Dixie Alley here. But let's not go and take a look now at tomorrow. So you're probably thinking, holy cow, look at these K values across the south central United States up to five thousand joules per kilogram. But again, we're not gonna be seeing any super weather in those areas at least. Uh, spe specifically these areas again, but we're start seeing some severe weather by five o'clock and six o'clock here around 18z. Four portions of the Ozark can get up to possibly maybe 3,000 joules per kilogram, and maybe even as high as 3,500 joules per kilogram here. So we're start seeing some pretty favorable conditions across the Ozarks and the far tip and edge of uh, Tornado Alley, and that's exactly why we do have that. A uh, big chance for significant hail, significant wind, and as well a five percent chance for tornadoes in those areas because we're missing the most favorable conditions in that in that region. But look at that, getting as high as six thousand three hundred joules per kilogram across central and southern Texas. I mean, if we were to have any super weather there, I mean that would be an absolute massive threat. But eight o'clock here, some really widespread high numbers all the way as far as portions of Kentucky and Indiana, getting as high as three thousand joules per kilogram as well some widespread 4,000 joules per, per kilogram there across Arkansas uh, even some widespread numbers there like that across the Ozarks and of course as we go now to Tuesday morning that severe weather will make its way towards portions of the uh, I, I guess the K Tennessee and Kentucky Valley there Paducah watching as well for some severe weather near Memphis uh, Poplar Bluff uh, St. Louis St. Uh, Evansville Indiana and that's way really portion there in general southern Illinois some pretty good numbers up to 3,000 joules per, per kilogram in the early morning hours and that'll kind of die off by the late morning hours and then by the late morning hours that will definitely bring the threat for some severe weather for uh, the deep south here in portion of Dixie let's go ahead and look at that by noon we're already seeing by noon we kind of saw on the Nampier kilometer we're kind of seeing some scatter stores across Georgia there and the Carolinas you can kind of see Already by noon, nearly 4,000 joules per kilogram, actually 4,100. So going to get already as high as 4,000 joules per kilogram on uh, at, at noon. Let's not go look a few hours later on. By 3 o'clock, that's when that severe weather starts to become really widespread across a uh, portion of Western Dixie Valley. Yeah, seeing that pretty intense squall line. And getting as high as already 4,700 joules per kilogram across Tennessee. Mississippi, Alabama, and Arkansas, and we're actually going to be seeing some se severe weather in these areas, which is why day three is such a big concern here, because all the times we've seen these type of K values, there's been no severe weather in those areas, but for once, we're seeing we're going to be seeing nearly 5,000 joules per kilogram, and we're actually going to be seeing some widespread severe weather, which is exactly why I think we can already see possibly an enhanced risk for day three, and maybe watching out for a higher threat there, but getting as high as 4,900 K values by 5 o'clock here, that's just become a bigger threat here. I mean, even by 8 o'clock, some widespread 3,000 joules per, per kilogram, so definitely a pretty big concern for some severe weather on day three. Let's now go ahead with the helicity values. I'm going to get some pretty decent helicity values here. Uh, I, I believe we're going to be seeing some pretty good numbers up to possibly as high as 300 uh, meter second squared per second squared across portions of Louisiana, as well getting as high there as 400 meter second squared per second squared there across portions of southwestern Mississippi. And that'll definitely increase up to 500 there, and even some widespread 400s there as we go later overnight. Here's some better conditions for sub severe weather. As we're going to go later on now into now Monday here, uh, really, really watch out for that super, super weather across specifically the time period around the late morning out or late uh, noon hours there, or sorry, not late noon, that's not anything, late, uh, nearly dusk hours there on Monday into the morning hours there across portions of Ohio Valley. But see, by around midnight here on Tuesday morning here, some pretty good numbers up to possibly a five, or uh, actually no, a possibly up to a 400 meter second square per second squared across Oklahoma and the Ozarks, and that's going to continue to go towards the east here as we go in the morning hours on Tuesday. You can get up to possibly 400 there across Mississippi, and it's going to continue to go towards the east here. Let me actually scroll a little bit towards the east here. By the late morning hours, you kind of see some small numbers there across the Ohio Valley and portions of the Kentucky Valley across kind of the right in the Ohio, Ohio River. You're going to be seeing some good numbers anywhere from 200 to 300 meters second square per uh 
per second square there. But after that, I go later into the morning hours here and early afternoon hours. These numbers are going to start getting some pretty good numbers already. With three days out across Alabama and Georgia, getting already as high as 350 to possibly 400 meters per square per second square. So really watching out for some pretty good conditions, like I did say for day three. Let's now go ahead and look at the supercell composite parameter. You kind of see we're missing a pretty uh, decent chance for some supercells within the next few hours here. Going to get up to around an 18 there, possibly a 20. Some widespread single digits across Dixie Alley here. But let's not go later on here into the, uh, let's go into the uh, late afternoon hours here. We're going to start seeing some pretty good conditions now for some severe weather across much of the East Central United States there, including the uh, Mississippi River Valley, Ohio River Valley, and just much of this whole area right here, kind of between the Ohio River and the Mississippi River. So it's kind of right there, I guess you can call, I guess you can call it the, the, the South Central or Eastern Plains. Uh, by 7 o'clock, already getting up to some 20s on the SCP scale for some super set, for some super set composite. As we go now, go later on though. And during the overnight hours, these numbers will rapidly decrease here. But really watching out for these areas, though, for some super cells, you can kind of look right here. We're going to be seeing those better numbers uh, across that region here. Uh, Arkansas, Mississippi, uh, Oklahoma, and Kansas can really watching out for those areas for some scattered super cells. But then I go later into the morning hours, we can see some smaller numbers there to possibly some uh, lower teens and uh, single digits there across the uh, Evansville area, Kentucky, Tennessee. So we're going to be seeing a small chance for some super cells. It's going to be just mainly some intense winds and some small hail there but let's not go ahead and go as far now as let's actually get to the deep south real quickly uh quickly as ready by three o'clock here already some good numbers here uh 24 there to run a the upper teens and as well some widespread uh double digits here already uh by three o'clock as you now go by six o'clock here on day three already getting up to 26 there across north central alabama which is kind of the heart of that uh slight risk so really watching out for that area Let's now go ahead and look at the significant tornado parameter. And we're going to be seeing some really good conditions already uh, for possibly some scattered tornadoes across Miss Mississippi there in Louisiana. Going to get as high as possibly a six there for the uh, Hattiesburg area. But other than that, we're not going to be seeing a widespread tornado threat. We may see a few, maybe a, a couple tornadoes today. But overall, we're not looking at anything too concerning here. But let's now go ahead and look at the uh, significant tornado probability here by two, uh, by uh Monday, uh, yeah, tomorrow evening here, so, uh, a six there, possibly a, maybe a seven right there near the Ozark. So, we're gonna be really watching out for a, a little limited area for a uh, tornado probability there. It's kind of, I guess, matching up where we have that five percent chance, and then of course, that kind of decreased as we go overnight here. And that could be seeing a great probability for the Ohio, the uh, Ohio River Valley, maybe a two, three, or maybe a four, but overall, looking at anything too crazy. Let's now go ahead and look at day three. Again, day three is definitely the main concern. Let's go ahead and look at uh, Tuesday by around 1 o'clock here, 2 o'clock Eastern time, and 1 o'clock Central time. I'm going to be seeing already uh, as high as 6 there across portions of Arkansas, Mississippi, and portions of Arkansas, and some widespread 2s and 4s. And as we now go later on here by getting to 6 o'clock here, this 6 o'clock was really concerning, getting it as high as already an 8 or 9. So three days out, looking at Alabama there, Tennessee, Mississippi and as well getting to Georgia later on here getting as high as at 11 uh, Already getting as high as 11 three days out for the significant tornado parameter and last but not least Let's go ahead and look at the shear here some pretty favorable shear right now uh, That strong little jet brings some pretty nice amounts of shear. You got that little pressure kind of right there uh, So pretty good shear across Louisiana and Mississippi there in Texas Which is exactly what we'll be watching out for some super weather later today and get as high as 50 to 60 knots as we now go later into tomorrow, a big, huge wave of shear across portions of the central United States there. And by um, the overnight hours here, we're going to get it already. So pretty good shear up to 50 to 60 knots. The only thing about tomorrow is we're not going to be seeing an extreme amount of shear. We're going to be seeing kind of maybe 20 to 30 knots here where we'll be watching out for that severe weather. So not going to be seeing that much shear to, to favor some severe weather tomorrow. I mean, that shear may catch up. To the severe weather in the Ohio Valley by the by the morning hours on Tuesday, getting as high as 60 knots. Uh, but that shear is going to definitely be in place there for Dixie Alley. Uh, definitely in place. They're going to get already at 30 to possibly 50 knots in that area. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys later.